In this demo, I'm going to quickly go over how to create a portfolio slash flat document in a PDF format to share or post on a website or email or put in a Dropbox. So the whole point of this demo is really to show you the steps that are needed. Um, I did provide a sample template. Um, click over here and you can see. I have both an InDesign template, INDD, and an IDML. If you're using um, Creative Cloud, Adobe Creative Cloud 2014 or relatively new version, this should open fine. If you're using an older version of InDesign, you're going to want to open up the IDML. So both of these are going to be available if you'd like. Uh, just look down in the notes of the video and you can download them. So what I'm going to do though is I also have another um, a group of elements and that are images. Again, I'm showing these just as sample. These are pretty low resolution images but they'll get the job done for this demo. So you can see I just have a handful of images. They'll do the job from a trip I went to when I went to Texas, Austin, Texas back in, uh, I want to say it was 2009, maybe 2010. So um, decent, they would do the job for the demo. Um, they're not high res, so that will come into play later when we look at the difference between file sizes and different versions I'm gonna export. So let's begin. Um, first of all, of all, looking at the InDesign file, I have a couple different um, placeholder templates, I guess that you could call them. Um, I have this version with four different uh, placeholder frames. I have this version with one, and I also have a title or description of, of the work. Um, and again, I can go in and you can edit this for whatever, you know, the piece to describe the piece. And I also put down the bottom um, my name and design portfolio. You can name it whatever you want. Uh, the page is also a placeholder as well. Uh, but you can see as I go through the pages, it actually um, does update the page. So, and then, oh, this third template is also a horizontal version, um, very similar. The only difference is horizontal. Um, if you want to edit this, you're going to want to go to the master. So it's pretty simple. There's, uh, there's master files that can control some of the locking out some of the elements of your actual uh, spreads and pages down below. So just kind of remember that, that if you can't figure out how to edit something, it's probably because it's in a master. So, okay, let's begin. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in some of those images into my layout. Before I do that, I want to show the difference between normal view and um, preview. I'm right now in normal view. You can see it's showing the bleed. It's showing the frame. It's showing another frame. Um, if I hit W on my keyboard or if you click this button, I'm not going to, I don't, I like using shortcut keys. It makes you faster. So I'm just going to click W. You can see it kind of um, hides all of my uh, normal view mode elements, the bleed, slug, any other different guides and whatnot that you'd have on the page. So, okay, um, I'm gonna go um, just shift tab over to my um, work here. I am going to bring in some of the elements. I'm just gonna drag and drop. I love drag and dropping. Uh, it's just efficient, it's quick. You can kind of, you don't have to mess around much. You just get the job done. So um, it works. So, okay, you can also, let's say, let me undo that one. And you're like, let me undo this one too. You're like, oh, I wanna bring this in manually. You can, and that's totally fine. You can hit Command D on a Mac um, and bring in an image based on, okay, this way. So you go through and search through to find your image and place it. If you wanna use the menus, that's fine too. Place and bring in your piece. I think this is the one I didn't bring. I, I really don't like the way this looks here because this image uh, needs to be scaled down a little bit. Uh, one thing about editing the image, so that's zoomed in quite large, it's cropped a little poorly. So if you double click on the image and frame, it'll bring up the handles. If it's a brown box, you actually can edit how this image is fitting into the frame. So it's very useful to quickly um, organize it the way you like. And then just hit shift and down arrow to move it down a little bit. This one's still pretty large. I'm actually not liking the way this one's fitting. So we'll make a full, a new spread or page in a minute, you know, kind of learning that as well. So, and again, this template is just to, for you to use as a uh, placeholder. I mean, I'm sorry, a, a default template for you to pop in your work. You can add pages, you can style differently if you'd like, but it makes it where you can quickly have something that could work for um, 
sending to a client or a prospective client or a potential employer or what have you. Okay, that's good enough. This one looks terrible, but that's okay. <laughs> All right, so I, as I said before on this page three, this horizontal, I don't like the way this one's looking. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new page. You can, there's a couple different ways you can do this. I like, again, being simple. I'm just gonna right click, insert page. You can also go, there's other ways to do it, but that's the way I do it. I'm just following my workflow. Um, if you have a different workflow, totally fine. Um, but to me, I, I usually go by what's quickest. And there's quicker ways to do it. That's just what I'm used to. Um, okay, I'm going to select my master. I'm actually going to go with the A master. The A is the one that I set up as vertical. I should probably rename it to be vertical rather than A master, but that's fine. And I'm going to have it pop in after the third page. So, All right, so you can see it. Popped it in there, created a new master, page four. This is page three, and you can see the page numbers are updating like we like I like, so that's good. Um, okay, so now I'm going to go to um, actual normal view so I can see my um, different guides on my page. I'm going to create a new frame. You can hit F or you can go over to the uh, box with an X through it. And again, I'm just going to make it be pretty much full size. Um, Full screen here. There we go. That works. Okay, so now you can see I have my frame. And you don't need to do that. It's not necessary to make a frame for every image you bring in, but it does help um, with constraining and bringing in lots of different imagery. You can have the, all the constraints set up um, predetermined in the, in the file. So there's a lot of different ways you can do that. Fitting. Um, I'm not going to get into it in this demo, but there is a lot of control that you can do with frames versus just bringing in the image. So. Okay, then I'm going to go uh, Command R, oh, I'm sorry, Command D, to bring in the image that I was not liking the way I was looking. This guy right here. Okay, much better. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. Command uh, uh, minus on the keyboard. It's a little too much. And there we go. It's pretty good, better. Again, I'm just going to move it down, make the composition a little bit better. Yeah, I'm just trying to get it closer to the rule of thirds. Uh, it's a good principle to follow. So I want this kind of this, this horizon line coming right through a third of the page. Makes me happy. Okay, and then you could also put in copy and whatnot. You don't need to do it in this application. I do like um, putting copy in a uh, InDesign file. It comes out great. So I'm just going to call it Austin. Uh, Texas, I want to say it was 2009, I'm not actually sure, but this is just a demo. So, uh, nice default, Minion Pro, thank you, but not. I uh, hope that will work. Mm, let's go thin. Mm, that's not too bad. Uh, Good, good. It works. I, I don't I hate metrics. I'm going to do optical. If I had time, I would actually work on the uh, current a little bit more. That, that does the job. Okay. So, decent. Okay, done. Now we want to export out. A couple different ways to export. Um, you can do file export. I don't recommend it. It leaves you with just a couple minimal options as far as how would you like to export it. I want to have a little bit more control. And you do have more control, but I, I just, I like starting with a preset. And I actually create my own presets, uh, which you can do down the road. But for now, I'm going to show you smallest and high quality. So I'm going to export this out as small. Okay, and I'm going to put on my desktop. Probably shouldn't do it on your desktop, but in this demo case, that's fine. It's it just, there's a little flag here, a warning that this will need Adobe Reader 6 or later, which is fine. I, you know, I don't really care about that. And it opens it up immediately, which, thanks, um, and high quality. And the reason it opens up immediately is because of a uh, little checkbox right here. It says view PDF after exporting. If you don't want it opening right when you export, just uncheck that checkbox. I like it, um, so I usually, I usually leave it checked in. And then once you click export, it opens up this. So this one is high and this one is small. So high resolution, 
on the right, small resolution on the left. You can see there's a lot more data loss going on, especially if you look at this right here, right in here, a lot of data loss, even in these numbers, and as we fade, as we go off in the depth of field, it's really, really rough. Now, you do have to remember, these are low resolution images to begin with, so it, pretty much whatever you import, if it's low res, it's gonna not look great as you export, so keep that in mind. Um, but I also want to show, look at the data file size. So we have high right here, so put this over here, and we have a small or low res right here. 275 kilobytes versus 853. So that's a pretty big difference. Um, when you think about the difference in file size, it's double, no, triple, almost four times as much for the high version. Um, so that's something you have to consider. I, I would not recommend sending Email, I guess email you could get away with 800K, uh, but if these images were higher res, you probably, it would probably be a little bit larger file, a couple meg. So you just want to be considerate of people's um, email clients and what they're going to be willing to uh, accept. Um, just again, remember the data loss. So you'll see here as I scroll down, you might not be able to see it in screen capture, but there's a lot of banding and loss around these uh, the twigs of this tree. Here, everything looks a little bit sharper. Again, this is a low resolution image, but just consider that when you're deciding what type of quality. For a quick proof, this would be great, as long as you call out that, hey, this is low resolution, it's not the final. Um, for a client, you would want to even go higher than this, um, but it's good to, you know, you could um, use this as kind of a handoff as well, or a, a check-in with a client or a potential employer or project. So, but again, just remember when you're working with file size, Keep, keep in mind people's email client and what their email might be willing to accept or not. Thanks. If you have any uh, questions, let me know uh, or leave a comment below. Thanks.